Hey everybody, Nerd Transformed here again, and today I'm reviewing the Transformers 2007 movie Deluxe Class Payload. Now Payload here is very similar to Swindle from the that I reviewed previously in the fact that he is not in the movie. He was one of these figures that was kind of released as like a minion, but never actually appeared in the movie. And he does kind of a similar thing going on where he had like the, you know, Cyclops eye and everything going on, little camera lens head, and there were a few other figures like that in the toy line. But it also meant they weren't restricted to like licensed vehicles like the main characters were, so makes for for a little bit more variety in the toy line itself at least. Now as I mentioned, he is a deluxe class, and just for comparison, let's go ahead and get Titans Return Chrome Dome in here. You can see they are about the same site uh, link vehicle, though Chrome Dome is a lot lower to ground. Although Chrome Dome is also a lot more compact compared to Payload, as he is a bit empty right here. But as you can see, he is some type of security truck, as you can actually see from the emblem here with a little Decepticon logo. It's hard to read because it is broken up, plus my camera refuses to focus on it, but it does say Armored Security Service. So this is some kind of security vehicle, presumably presumably for like transporting money or criminals or something like that. Maybe our Decepticons, who knows, but of course, much like Barricade, he's a protection vehicle that in itself is a bad guy being a Decepticon, so kind of has that whole thing going for him. Now this vehicle mode, uh, one of the biggest things about Halo from the original movie is that he does have a lot of missing pieces usually. Mine is complete, but one of the things you're going to want to look for if you're buying this is in vehicle mode his grill can actually pop off and there's not like any glue or anything holding it on. You can glue it on there if you want, but if you do buy the second hand, make sure this grill is in there. There's quite a few other pieces, but they're more visible in robot mode, so we'll cover them there. But while I have him in hand, you can see he's got some pretty good detail going. Uh, he does kind of have this, like, metal kind of... I'm not sure what you call this. Gr metal grating? Is that how, what you call it? But it's got this, like, metal grating effect going on on the side here. Although it's a little bit ruined with a big old hinge from where he transforms right there. The wheels, this is actually when you had a paint budget, it's, are actually painted in a nice little sil me metallic gray, or metallic silver. So it actually has the rims painted. The back here has a little bit of that metallic silver too to kind of go with the uh, the white plastic here. There is of course the emblem there, so that's pretty nice. You do get the windows along the back actually done the same metallic silver, and you get some red for the uh, tail lights. And the front's pretty well done too. We do get the orange lights along the top here actually painted. We got a couple stripes here. The grill itself actually has some orange for the headlights, and the windows are done in a clear plastic. It's hard to tell, yeah, it's like a clearish, dark, a really heavily tinted clear plastic. And even along the bottom, you really can't see too many robot parts. I mean, I'm sure you can start picking out parts if you know how it transforms. But you can actually see a lot of the details along the bottom are actually very kind of vehicle, what you kind of see from the bottom of the vehicle, for the most part. But it does make a very nice little security uh, truck, or security van, no, security truck. Only thing is he doesn't hold the gear too long. Just notice that big old crack there. Plus you can see the crack right here where the transformation goes along. And don't get me started along the sides here with the big old hinge right here. All the little cracks going through there. Um, big old hinge right there. Even on the front you get some of that. Not quite as bad as Universe Ironhide, but not too far off either. So overall decent truck mode. So let's get down to his transformation. It's pretty simple. Grab the top of the lit of the back part here. And this will come back on a hinge right on the back here. So basically this figure that for transformation is going to break up into three parts and you transform them into three parts of fit each. This part will actually become the top of the robot mode, as you can see the heads are tucked away inside. Then you're going to want to come over here. And the grill, it might actually be easier to show you this by removing it. But what you're going to want to do is, there's actually a false grill underneath too. It's kind of weird. It's like they put this on last minute or something. But what you're going to want to do is actually separate the wheels out like so, and actually have what's behind the grill going up with the windows. And then we're going to put the grill back on, just to kind of show you what it looks like. And this is kind of where the layers switch around, because, you know, this is like layer 1, 2, and 3. But layer 1 is actually going to be at the top, layer 3 is going to be in the middle, and layer 2 is going to be what's the legs. So it's almost like it all flips around like so. So we'll go ahead and start with the legs, go ahead and split them. You're going to kind of take these little shards of the, from the side where the emblem's still hanging on and just fold them down like so. 
go ahead and rotate the waist just to make it a little easier on yourself. And you actually see it reveals a lot of the details. Take the little grilled pieces that are just kind of sticking off. And then you're going to bring the whole front of the vehicle kind of forward like so to form his feet. And you kind of can just adjust these little side pieces there. It's got some loose hips on mine. And just have him stand like so. Yep. He can be a little hard to balance because he is a little kibbly and a little heavy still with his everything sticking out like this. Go ahead and bring the camera around back a little. Here, let's pull the figure back and then adjust the camera from there. There we go. Alright, now these big old hinges that we saw before will fold in and there's actually a peg that will peg right into the wheel there. Like so. Then grab the arms and bring them down. You do have to pull them out, outward a little bit otherwise they get caught in those little gray pieces. You're going to rotate them till the elbows are forward. Open up this panel and there's a hand hidden inside on each side. And the hand is on a ball joint so you can adjust it as needed to fit into the armor here. There is a certain way you're kind of supposed to just kind of fit like so. But you could open up the armor a bit more and kind of have it fit however you want. My problem with that really is that the hand only is going to fit in a certain way. Otherwise you're going to have the armor kind of popped open still. But it's kind of whichever is your preference. I like to leave the armor pop open a little so I can have the hands actually stick out straight. Or you can also have the hands spinning inward if you prefer. Like so. And the last thing for transformation is the head. This piece is actually on a slide. And it'll actually slide into this little box that was all in the bottom of the vehicle. And there's the other piece that falls off easily. Oh, so it can be a little tight, but you are supposed to... Huh, this one's really on it. There. So you can see, it actually slides in and clicks. And then, let me find where the head went, actually. Oh dear. Oh no, we have a missing head alert. Okay, there he is. So yeah, the little head piece and the panel around the head kind of pops off really easily. As you remember, it was actually sitting right in there, and we'll show you how to get it back on in a minute. But go ahead and take where the head's supposed to be, pull it on back, and now the entire top of the truck mode is going to split, and it's actually also tabbed into the top here too. Fold around on these double hinges that we could see earlier. And there's actually a lot of cool detail all inside here. I mean, you can see like fans and wires and all kinds of little gadgets, and all that disappears because you're going to just collapse the panels like so. Granted, you can still see the fans, but yeah, most of that detail it looks really good, and you can only see during transformation. It's blocked off. I'm not sure why. And you see there's four little pegs. There's four little peg holes in where the head is. It does pop back on relatively easily. You can glue that down. There's no reason for this to really be a separate piece or that's how they molded it. But there you go with him in his robot mode. Now that we have Palo in his robot mode, let's go ahead and get comparisons out of the way. Here he is next to Titan's Return Chrome Dome. Let me straighten out his legs a little. There we go. So you can see typical deluxe class size, you know, 10 years apart and not too much the same change as far as size goes. Although I do think payload has got quite a bit more paint and detail going on here. Although he has his own set of issues as you can see. He's quite kibbly as you can see. Oh, and there goes his kibble flying off actually. And this is one of the things I mentioned, is that he does have a lot of pieces that you have to look out for if you want him complete. One of the things I mentioned is the bumper, which is now sticking out way back here, just sticking out. And you can see how easy that is to lose. The head, as you saw earlier, pops off at the drop of a hat. I really do recommend gluing this thing down. Whereas I didn't to show it in this video. And the last thing is on the other end of this black stick that's going through his body like he's been impaled is this piece, his little chest piece, or his abdomen piece. I don't know, but it is this little piece that's supposed to go over this spot right here. And this is the piece that's most commonly lost from what I've seen. Along with the, uh... Along with the, uh, front grill piece here. And you can kind of see why they're so easily lost, because they're kind of right in the middle of the gimmick, which we'll get to in a minute. I do want to talk about the detail on this figure first. I do think there's a lot of good detail, but it also feels like it's kind of wasted in some ways. As I mentioned, there is a lot of cool details all along the what, where the top of the truck was, but you never see it in either mode. It's all locked away. The only, even in robot mode, the only thing you see are these fans and wires. You can see some of it kind of going down here. So it does feel a little wasted. I do actually kind of like how the head sculpt this one better than Swindle. For one thing, it's actually kind of sticking out of the chest more. 
And for another, it has a bit more personality as he has kind of like a chin going on with these little pieces on the top too. And I really like the colors on him too. He's got this nice teal going around his head here. And you also see the teal going down his arms and along the top of his legs too. So there's a pretty nice breakup. Plus he also get a little bit on this abdomen piece. And it's a pretty big color change considering the truck mode had a lot of red, a little bit of red to orange mixed into it. And then here we get this kind of teal and silver look going. So it's actually a pretty nice little change. And I also like some of the details along the bottom here, like especially right here where the legs are, you can see some like kind of wiring piston kind of details. And that grating effect that um, he had in his truck mode for here, it actually carried over to his knees here. Granted, they're not the same pieces, but it's kind of nice to imply as if those pieces ended up over here or something. Gives them a nice armored look. Now his proportions are a little weird, but it does make him look kind of bulky, which I guess is fitting for like a Decepticon little minion kind of dude. So yeah, I think he's got some nice things going on for his looks. But then we get to his gimmick. So of course, just like with Swindle, he has a gimmick. And now Swindle, I do think is an overall worse figure than him, but he handled his gimmick a lot better, I think. Even if he was a little unsolid for it. This guy, uh, you notice how he had a big old black block just sticking through him for both modes. Well, here's what it's for. You're supposed to be able to push on it. I'm going to show you this in slow motion first. You're supposed to be able to push on it, but mine gets stuck. And you can see these little gray pits. What you're supposed to do is push on it, and it comes out and around, and gives them a claw weapon. Like so. You can see this is how it's supposed to work, basically. So actually, let me get Chrome Dome back over here. So you know, you got Chrome Dome coming over here, and you got Palo coming out with the claw thing, except it's going to break off that piece that it's supposed to stay on. But you can see... It actually works better without this little piece. Because when you have it on there, it actually gets kind of stuck most of the time. It went through that time, but most of the time it usually ends up doing this. Where it just gets stuck like that. And that sucks too, because normally if you get the claw always shut, you can pretend this is like a gun or something. So you like grab it on about with a claw and then, you know, blast them away with it. But most of the time it here does this, where the piece goes flying off. Or even if the paste stays on, it gets in the way of the claw. As you can see, it's still having trouble even with it properly in place. It looks cool. I mean, it's got some Five Nights at Freddy's kind of thing going on here. Like, rrr, or maybe some alien kind of thing if you prefer, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. Another problem with the weapon, uh, with the gimmick, uh, oh, there goes his head again. I don't know why this is a separate piece. I have no idea why this is a separate piece. It makes no sense. Is, well, another problem with the gimmick is that when you try to retract it back, if you're not retracting it right, it gets stuck. Because the claw is stuck on the outside, even though it's supposed to be on the inside. And then it can really mess it up, and then there goes that little middle piece again, as you just saw. Because of how much force you have to push behind the springs, especially after 10 years, it gets stuck a lot. But what you're supposed to do is let the claw sit in like that, and then it'll retract properly, and also cause its head to fall off. And you know what, just because everything else has fallen off. Okay, I freaking flick the grill and this piece flew off instead. Is that a gimmick? I don't know. Could be. Maybe he just has part leprosy. Let's not make fun of him too much. We gotta feel bad for him. He's a, he's a Decepticon with a disability. And yeah, this grill's lost the most often, but it's also the piece that I have the hardest time getting to fly off, really. I mean, granted, truck mode does fly off, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that's his gimmick. A cool idea, but very badly handled, especially with, for one thing, that the backpack of Doom he's left with, because putting this thing on the shelf is impossible, because if it was just this, it would still be a pain, but it wouldn't be so bad. But with the grill added, not it doesn't take up just this tiny amount, it takes up this amount, because you can't put anything between them without him blocking them now, also his shoulder kibble. So yeah. It now takes up basically this amount of room behind him because of this gimmick and how his shoulder count is all of his kibbles handled. And these have no reason to pop off either, other than not to break them, I guess. I mean, he can't hold them, they don't tab in anywhere. The only place they go is where they're meant to be. I have no idea. If, if you could take this off and turn it into a shield for his arm or something, the same with this, maybe cover it over his hand or something, like. Because I thought that was what was going on at first. Maybe you're supposed to, like, fold away his hand and then take this and, like, peg it over and give him, like, a hand cannon. You know, I'm not a big fan of parts forming, but you know what? I would at least understand then. But no, it's just... 
Ooh. Like I said, part leprosy. Now, let's get to one of the good points about this figure. His articulation. Unlike Swindle, he actually has a really good amount. Uh, his head is on a swivel, not bolt jointed, but you can look around enough to get the idea that he's looking left or right. His arms are on ball jointed, or I should say his shoulders are ball jointed, so you can swivel all the way around. You can get a swivel right below them as well. A decent elbow joint, just over just a hair over 90 degrees. And as you saw earlier, the hands are ball jointed. You do kind of got to do like an SH figure it's kind of thing of posing it first and then closing the armor on it. But you can do it, you know, they can go inward if you want. They can go slightly up and down depending on how you have the armor in the way or not. And you can swivel them all around, so there's a decent mount there. You do get a waist still, despite this gimmick of doom, he does have a waist swivel still. You do get ball jointed uh, hips. You do get a swivel, though it's kind of buried next to where the hip joint is due to the armor. You can use it, but it's very tight because the armor has to slide around on it. And you do get a 90 degree knee. And you do get art ankle articulation too. And it goes both ways, so you can actually get a pose going. You do gotta, you know, take in for a balance with the giant kibble cannon here, but you can get a pose going with it if you want. Like he's lunging towards something. Have his claws and straps stretched out. Which is something I do miss. I do miss when like Transformers had it like hand hands instead of just the fist with a hole drilled in. I mean, I know that kind of thing's been going on with classics all over the place, but I do miss when we got movie figures where we got, like, different kinds of hands going on. So, yeah, that's movie one, uh, Payload. Both better and worse than Swindle. As far as, as an overall figure goes, he's better in a lot of ways. But as far as how he handles his gimmick and kibble, he's much, much worse. He's a pain in the butt to display on your shelf with all of this sticking out behind him. Like I said, it doesn't look like that much, but when you're actually displaying him, you might as well just count all this as a giant chunk to come his back, as far as display goes. And for all that, his gimmick's not really even that cool. It's a cool idea, don't get me wrong, but they should've just made like a fax action battle or something with this gimmick attached, and just left payload as he is. Because if they kind of got rid of this bar, his shoulder kibble would be a lot easier to deal with, because he can actually move around and not get in the way. But this, plus the, you know, All of this, all of that right there, especially since without this, his chest admin looks like a piece of crap. Without this, he can't even be a robot. And without this, his truck mode looks incomplete. And you're just left with this little monstrosity. With all that, I actually cannot recommend Pele with all of this kind of crap going on. And it's sad too, because he does have actually really good articulation. And I want to recommend him to more than Payload. I used to like this figure. As the years go by, and I just, I mean, as I, when I was younger, I didn't display, like, for a kid, this is probably fun, but he's gonna, that kid's also gonna lose all the pieces real quick. And as an adult collector, this figure's just a nightmare. So, if you want to give something to your kid, and he's just gonna throw it against the wall, and he won't care if he lost the pieces or not, he, it might be worth it, but beware, because, you know, this little piece that pops out is small enough for a kid to choke on, probably. So be careful, be wary and careful of that. For collectors, I would also have to say skip this figure. He does have good articulation and I do really like the colors and such on him. But all of that is just a little too much. So, this has been Nerdy Transformed. I hope you enjoyed this review and hope you have a good day. Take care.